All right, this time we're solving an inequality for x again, and this one is different from the last few that we did because we're solving a quadratic or a nonlinear inequality. And the bad news is nonlinear inequalities are much harder to get your head around at, at first, but the good news is regardless of the kind of nonlinear inequality, the strategy is the same at first. We try to break the nonlinear thing, whatever form it's given, in this case it's a quadratic. We try to break that into its linear factors. Then we make a table of when all the linear factors are positive and negative. We multiply those together to get the overall irreducible or the nonlinear term to find out when he's positive or negative, and then we can answer the question. So the idea is, Linear equations, it's fairly easy to find out when a linear equation and solve linear inequalities. The strategy is what we do is we break the nonlinear guy into a bunch of linear parts, solve all those linear inequalities, and then multiply them together to get the nonlinear guy. So that's the overall strategy. So here we go. Basically, I have x squared minus 5x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Never start square rooting or bringing, this is the wrong idea. What we're gonna do is the strategy always is we have to factor the nonlinear thing they've given you. So if there's any justice in the world, they've given us something which will be factorizable. So we're gonna play the game which multiplies, two numbers multiply to give me four and add to give me negative five. That's correct, negative four and negative one. So this is x minus one times x minus four is greater than or equal to zero. Once I have that, that's the correct first move. Regardless, this one I was nice to myself, but even if they put the four on this side or whatever the strategy is, as soon as you've got a nonlinear inequality, bring everything to the left-hand side classically and greater than or less than zero. It doesn't matter which one you create, just create something like this. Step two is factorize it. Now what we're gonna do is, I also gave myself one where it's, I don't have a denominator or anything, but now let's pretend, can you find when this is actually equal to zero? It's equal, at, equal to zero at the roots, which are one and four. So what that tells me is I've now split the real number line into three intervals, negative infinity to one, one to four, and four to infinity. A lot of people like to argue just with this picture and that's fine. I like to make a table and solidify it because these can be become cubic or cortic or huge and some and the more and more terms you get or when we get derivatives eventually you'll see the idea is well you'll get I want to know when the first derivative and second derivative are positive or negative and that will be a nonlinear inequality we're gonna to have to solve so this is gonna come back in further videos so I like to make a table it was zero at one and minus one, so that splits me into three intervals. An interval notation, that's negative infinity to one, this interval, one to my next root, one to four, this interval, and then four to infinity. Notice I've listed them as the lowest interval or the leftmost interval to the rightmost interval in my rows. Then what I'm gonna do is so that I can systematically do this on exams and stuff like that for my brain, then what I systematically do is look at this and I want the lowest root and then the next root. So one was the lowest root and four. So then I'm gonna list these as these terms, the lowest root to the highest root. There was only two in this case. Then what I want is their product, which was x minus one times x minus four. And then I wanted it to be positive so then we can give it a check mark. And this table I find, especially at first, will completely uh, keep track of everything and of all the chaos of what's going on. Again, what are we doing? I took my nonlinear inequality, a quadratic in this case, split it into its two linear terms, found out when it was zero, split the real number line into those intervals, and now we have a table. And now what we're gonna do is on each interval, find out if these pieces are positive or negative, and then we'll multiply them together and put them in here and then check to see what we wanted. And we want greater than zero or equal. So in here, in this first interval from one to in negative infinity, all I have to do is pick any representative in there and everybody is the same sign. So I'm gonna pick zeros in that interval, so I like that. So zero minus one is negative. All you need is the sign. Zero minus four is negative, but negative times negative is positive. In the next interval from one to four, two is in there. I usually just pick a nice integer that's in the interval. Don't be fancy with your numbers, it'll get crazy. 
So two is in there, I'm gonna pick it. Two minus one is one, which is positive, but two minus four is negative two, which is still negative. All I need is the sign, so I get a negative. Negative times positive is negative, so this quadratic is negative in that interval. In this interval, from four to infinity, five happens to be in there, so I'm gonna take five. Now five minus one is four, which is positive, and five minus four is one, which is positive. A positive times a positive is a positive. So this is a yes, this is a no, this is a yes. What that says now is from the table, we can assess when this is true. So what we're really saying is this. X squared minus five X plus four is greater than or equal to zero if and only if. And now I can see from my table, this interval I can keep and this interval I can keep and I can use square brackets for the numbers because it was a less than or equals inequality. So this will say X is in negative infinity to one union four to infinity. <clears throat> Pictorially, what's that doing? This is why we start showing you how to graph things because the graph is definitely worth a thousand words in this scenario. Really what we were doing was this, one, two, three, four. We know our function is zero here and zero here. We have a parabola this is what's happening and that's exactly what it just told us our function is above the x-axis or positive from negative infinity to one and it's also positive from four to infinity and it's less than zero where's the vertex oh that's a completion of square videos